Um, okay, so I think this is a hard way to transition, but I've got it. Okay. Speaking of things that have curbs. Yes. <laughs> uh, city streets have curbs. And uh, the, our for our classic review of the week, we have the burbs. The burbs, yes. Uh, yeah, this is a, a favorite of mine. Uh, and it was kind of a, it was a staple in my my household. Uh, we, we used to watch this movie all the time. Um, yeah, and I know that for 30 odd years, I've been seeing this image in like video stores and on, on streaming services. So it's very iconic. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so the the burbs is of course uh of course stars tom hanks um and uh, he's he plays ray patterson who, or peterson was it peterson or patterson i can't remember um but he plays ray uh and he's um a typical kind of suburban uh it's a uh, peterson peterson okay ray peterson and he's typical suburban dad, uh, husband, um, and uh, Carrie Fisher plays his wife, Carol, and they have a son. Um, and I think, if my memory serves, I think this is the first movie where Tom Hanks plays a dad. Hmm. Um, and yeah. I will say, I was kind of surprised when I found out this was in 1989, because you don't really think of Carrie Fisher getting a lot of acting roles that late in the 80s. No, she didn't. Yeah, She was mainly doing doing script uh doctoring work but um but yeah um so uh so they they live in uh this little cul-de-sac in you know suburban america um and they uh they they have very quirky neighbors um yes uh that's here so you've got art his i guess his best friend question mark yeah, question mark. Yeah, <laughs> who's just kind of a slob who uh, is a bit too conspiratorially minded for everybody's good. Yes, um, and he's also he's also a real freeloader. Uh, you know, he yep. goes over to the, goes over to his house and he's eating all their food. And... <laughs> yeah, like, like you know, Tom Hanks is. You know, he saw, he saw something the night before, so his stomach is upset. He doesn't want to eat. So you know, he has an, it makes no sense. He shows up. The pancakes have been made, so he eats the pancakes. He starts raiding their fridge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what killed me was when he puts the empty bottle of maple syrup back in the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then and then yeah, then he starts eating cold ribs and yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, then you've got his um, Vietnam vet neighbor, uh, Mark Rumsfe Rumsfield. Rumsfield, yeah. Uh, and uh, okay, so I was a little bit confused about this. Uh, was Bonnie Rumsfield supposed to be his trophy wife, or was she a relative of his? Uh, that's his trophy wife. Because at one point, I swear she referred to him as Uncle Mark. Uh, yeah, she was talking about that with the uh, the dog. Okay, see, I was trying to figure out, okay, is that her being playful, or is she just his hot niece who lives there for no reason? Because, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and um, I was really surprised at who it was. So that, that, was, that was Wendy Shawl, who uh, would go on to be on uh, Third Rock from the Sun, I believe. Yeah, and, and she was the voice of uh, the wife on American Dad. Yeah, um, actually, let me let me just double check that because uh, I thought I had looked her up. Small soldiers fired up. I, I thought maybe I'm mis maybe I'm once again mistaking. I guess not. Okay, well, yeah. that makes much more sense because I was like, dang. Okay, so we all know that in um, in what was that one witch movie in the '90s with the three witches? Um, um, they just made a sequel a couple years back. Uh, Hocus Pocus. Hocus Pocus. We all know that everybody is shocked when they find out who the hot witch was. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it was it was Sarah Jessica Parker. Yeah, and it's like, wait, what? I, I was I was if it, if it had actually been the um, the love interest from Third Rock from the Sun, I would have been like, what? 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 Well, yeah, <laughs> but no, I guess that makes more sense. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Moving on from my, uh, I, I think what I've really proven here is that there are actors I know and actors I do not know. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> a, um, yeah. So you know, Bruce Dern uh, is yeah. playing Mark Rumsfield, who is yeah. the uh, crazy militarist neighbor. 
Yeah. And the inciting incident is that uh, one of their neighbors, who uh, is a very large man uh, with a very small dog, keeps letting his dog out, and the dog keeps pooping on his lawn. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Walter. <clears throat> Walter, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, oh, well, you also forgot um, uh, Corey Feldman. <laughs> Uh, yes, a young Corey Feldman, who is the teenage neighbor who pervs on uh, Bonnie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and uh, and so, but the the whole thing <clears throat> revolves around uh, Ray's next door neighbor on the other side, and they got these new neighbors. They're called their names are the Clopex, and uh, the house is really run down. They're the yard's dead, like the you know the grass is dead, and and they never see the Klopex. like they don't know anything yep. about them. But late at night, the uh, their basement just lights up with bright lights that are visible from across the street. Right, and uh, and his uh, and Ray, uh, Tom Hanks's son, sees uh, actually saw saw them in the backyard digging one night. Yeah, for no apparent reason. Yeah. It's and, not like uh, they were, they're going to be growing anything back there. The lawn is dead. Right, yeah. And so uh, uh, Ray and Art uh, are talking to each other, and Art kind of, like, they, they kind of psych themselves into, well, why don't we just go over there and introduce ourselves? And, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and then they walk up, and they uh, uh, they the, get they, the huge knocker and hits the door, and then the the house number it's 669 and then it falls to 666 <laughs> yeah uh and it all it, it, it all just snowballs from there right yeah yeah um <clears throat> and so you know they're the entire time they're just you know they're just like oh you know they're trying to they're trying to find out what's going on and then like there's you know, of course then there's one scene when one of the uh one of the clopex who's played by um malachi from uh, children, of the, children of the corn um, <clears throat> comes out and he, he stuffs the trash in the trash can and he gets the backhoe and just starts <laughs> yeah. right and uh, that, that, that's an oddly suspiciously solid piece of trash in that bag yeah <laughs> uh, yeah and so and so then the, like the next morning they're digging through the trash and then, and yeah. one of the things that killed me was that they just dump the trash in the middle of the street and the trash men who watch them do it never pick it up so for the rest of the movie there's this trash pile that people just drive through without doing anything about it <laughs> right yeah <laughs> yeah but um but then you know things just kind of escalate from there where their their paranoia and their conspiratorial nature just kind of gets the better of them uh and then uh so finally uh uh Carrie Fisher and then and Wendy Shaw, they they're just like, you know what? Let's just all be adults and go over there and introduce ourselves and you know be friendly neighbors and you know. and things get somehow manage to get creepier dealing <laughs> with them in person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the so there are three of them. Uh you you've got uh you had Hans, like I said, the one the one with the with the garbage. Um and then uh, there's uh, Rube, who's played by uh, Brother Theodore, who's an old, he was an old uh, uh, comedian from uh, back in like the 60s, 50s and 60s. And then, um, and then they, they have another, and then Rube's brother, uh, the Doctor, who's played Dr. by Henry Ferner Klopek. Ferner Klopek, played by uh, Henry Gibson, who uh, we, we saw him a couple of weeks ago in Blues Brothers, uh, leader of the bad guys from ww2 <laughs> yeah he seems to be uh kind of, kind of typecast as eastern european villains at least in the stuff that we've been seeing or, or supposed villains i should say so he's definitely a menacing character yeah yeah <laughs> i gotta say the 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 funniest scene for me in the whole movie is uh um the sardines yeah like when they come over they, you know, give them, you know, like, you know, people come into your house, you give them some food and they give them, what was it? Pretzels and sardines. Pretzels and sardines. Yeah. <laughs> they have Tom and they've just a, 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 a sardine draped on this pretzel and he just, just like slowly, just very reluctantly eating it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Rube Klopek is just staring at him the whole time. <laughs> yeah. 
but um, I, I don't think we want to spoil exactly what the mystery here is. Uh, right. Yeah. That is kind of the um, payoff of the movie. Um, but I will say it, it is satisfying. Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's like yeah. It, it's a, it is a dark comedy, but it's I, I would say more comedy than dark. Yeah. Oh, very much so. Yeah. Um, it, it has, and it, it's. I would say, it is the most cartoonish live action movie I've seen in ages. Yeah, I, I had forgotten how cartoonish it was uh, when I went back to rewatch it. Um, of course, the movie was directed by uh, Joe Dante, who did uh, Gremlins. So okay. I don't, I don't uh, and and uh, and Looney Tunes back in action. <laughs> okay, that 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 definitely fits then. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, it, it's um, yeah, this is it's you know, it's a funny movie. A lot of, a lot of great one-liners. A lot of quirky characters. And um, the other thing too is uh, you mentioned that it came out in '89. Uh, they filmed this movie during uh, the writers' strike in '87, hmm. '88, and so they actually had to like improvise and ad lib a lot of stuff. Um, Wow, that that's kind of amazing that it worked out as well as it did. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Like the like the one scene when you know, like Ray and Art are in the basement, and he's you know, like, "I'm not going to listen." And then and, and yeah, Art says, "Satan is good. Satan is our pal." Like that was that was ad lived. He made that yeah. up on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So some of the cartoonish things here, like characters survive things that they realistically shouldn't have. Yeah. Or, or, like. <laughs> Characters fall from a great height, make a perfectly man-shaped hole through a tin roof of a shed, and walk out more or less intact. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, I I was mentioning this when I when I had watched it. I, I realized that you could totally adapt this into a Bob's Burgers story, or like a. I, I was thinking Simpsons originally, but like the characters fit better because you'd have Tom Hanks's character as Bob, which is kind of the the every man who gets sucked into things, uh, yeah. art would totally be Teddy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> his, uh, his kind of dumb, but earnest friend who, uh, is, is the one to initiate, um, initiate problems. And then I, I, I there wasn't really a good direct equivalent to the militaristic neighbor. So I guess that'd be like, uh, you'd bring in Nick Offerman to voice a character for one episode or something. Yeah. <laughs> cause, Cause it's kind of like a weird mix of, um, like body snatchers and um, a rear window. Yeah. 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 I, oh, yeah. Yeah. I didn't, I never noticed that before. But yeah. Yeah. Those, those are two. Yeah. The, the, those are good comparisons there. Yeah. Especially rear window. Because uh, it's like a similar thing where, although, you know, Tom Hanks isn't laid up and unable to interact with anything, it's just like he's becomes obsessed with what's going on across the street. Right, yeah, because one of the aspects of his character is that he's he's supposed to be on vacation, right? Yeah, and, and he's and, supposed to be taking it easy, and he's not. Yeah, right, and he, right. He has decided that instead of going up to the lake like his wife wants, he's you know what, I'm going to amuse myself around the house. I'm just going to sit back and you know watch TV. And of course, he I guess he's like a Type A personality who can't really rest, so this mystery consumes him. Right. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, the, so I think that again, without going into spoilers, which we anybody who hasn't seen this movie, I think that it is worthy of your time. Yes, indeed. Yeah, uh, it is currently viewable on Netflix. Right. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Definitely watch this and yeah, give it a watch. I um, like I said, this is one of my favorite comedies. Um, you know, it was. It, it was nice to to watch a something from my childhood again. You know? Yeah. Yep. Well, my mistake was I watched this before I watched Rogue Nation, partially because of time. So, oh, yeah. uh, uh, like th this would have probably taken away some of the sting of boredom I felt. But no, I, yeah. that's either here nor there. Uh, yeah, this is a fine movie, and uh, thanks for suggesting it. Yeah, I'm 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 glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I I think. Uh, I think we've talked all, all we've we've said all we need to say about 